The following is a Relevant Radio program and is protected under U.S. copyright laws. This program is made possible through the contributions of listeners like you. Support Relevant Radio by clicking on the Donate icon at www.relevantradio.com. The middle of the week is here. I hope it's going well for you. Good morning, I'm Paul Sadek. This is Daybreak on Relevant Radio and the Relevant Radio app. It's Wednesday, July 27th, 2022, Wednesday of the 17th week in Ordinary Time. In the Missal, it's Liturgical Year C, Cycle 2. Wednesday is a day to pray the glorious mysteries of the Rosary. Our saints today are Saints Natalie and Aurelius. We don't know a lot about Natalie except that she was martyred for her faith with her husband Aurelius. Now, Aurelius was the son of a Moor and a Spanish woman and was orphaned as a child. He was secretly raised a Christian by his aunt during the Moorish persecution of Christians. He married a half-Moorish woman who took the name Natalie when she converted to Christianity. They were both beheaded for practicing their religion openly together with George, a monk from Jerusalem whom Aurelius had befriended. The year was 852. Saints Natalie and Aurelius, pray for us. Let's offer this day to the Lord. God, you know the desires of our hearts for authentic peace, justice, and love. I offer you my prayers, thoughts, words, actions, joys, and sufferings today together with Jesus, who continues to offer himself to us in the Eucharist who continues to reveal himself to us in the poor, the oppressed, the marginalized, the unborn, the most vulnerable in our world. May your Holy Spirit be my guide and strength today so that I may be a witness to your love, your justice, and your peace, and to the sanctity of each human life. Together with Mary, our mother, sister, and friend, she who carried the Savior in her womb, with all the communion of saints, and with all of us, who offer ourselves to you for the good of others today, we pray. Amen. And we join Pope Francis in praying for the elderly who represent the roots and memory of a people. May their experience and wisdom help young people to look towards the future with hope and responsibility. Ten Minutes with Jesus is a guided meditation on the gospel of the day prepared by a Catholic priest. Here's today's 10 Minutes with Jesus. My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask you pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. In chapter 13 of the Gospel of St. Matthew, Jesus uses different images to describe the kingdom of heaven. He says, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Jesus, you're telling us that the kingdom of heaven is worth a lot. It is a treasure. It is a pearl of great price. And not only that, it's worth giving up all we have in order to obtain it. To sell all that we have in order to possess that treasure. So what is the kingdom of heaven? Well, Christ himself. He who gives himself to us totally and constantly. Being in heaven will consist in being with Jesus and being with the Blessed Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ came to reveal to us God's plan, to reveal to us 
the life of God, the life of the Trinity. He's come to reveal to, to us that he wants to be with us for all eternity. The kingdom of heaven is a person. Jesus Christ, God made man. And we have Jesus present in the Eucharist. And so I thought in our time of prayer today to reflect on that wonderful treasure that is the Eucharist. And because it is that tr the treasure, that pearl of great price, it deserves our whole life. That Jesus loves us so much. He's given so much to us. That Jesus in the Eucharist deserves everything you've got and everything I've got. At the same time, he, of course, has given us a vocation to be in the middle of the world, for most of you to be living at home with your families. And yet still, he continues to be that great treasure, that great treasure which is calling out to your heart, which is calling out to my heart. And there's a danger about this so great of a treasure that is the Eucharist. And the danger is that we get used to having Jesus there. Jesus, we get used to having you under the appearance of something so ordinary, under the appearance of bread, that we can just forget about you. And that's not good, because then we forget about our treasure, which is where our heart should be. And when our heart is not with the proper treasure, then we suffer. We suffer. There is a short film, which you might be familiar with. It was nominated for the Oscars in 2012. It's about 10 minutes long. It is a stop-motion animation film. And it's entitled Head Over Heels. And it tells a story of a married couple. They're older, probably in their 60s. And they're empty nesters. It's not clear, I don't think, if they've had children or not. But the fact is is that they, they are empty nesters. And, um, and it's clear that their marriage is not going very well. They don't talk to each other. They are in the same house, but it's as if they were in two totally different worlds. And the way the director illustrates this, remember, it's stop-motion animation. The way he illustrates this, he does it in a very creative way, is he has the husband walking on the ground, on the floor, like gravity works normal for him, but then for the wife... Gravity works in the opposite direction so that she walks on the roof or on the ceiling. And so they are in the same house together, but they're, they're really not in communication and they really don't notice each other. There's a tension. There's a tension there. And so it tells a story about how eventually they fall in love again. Right, They rediscover each other in a very beautiful way. This, of course, can happen in any relationship. It can happen to a married couple. It can happen to friends, siblings. And it can happen between you and me and God. That we can be, in fact, not just in the same world. I mean, we're in his world. And he can be present in us. He can be present in the Eucharist, so close to us. And yet we forget, or we act like as if he's not there. 
or there can even be a tension because we're afraid of what he might ask of me. We're afraid of what he might want me to do. But let's rediscover God's presence in our lives. Let's rediscover Jesus in the Eucharist. To have a, a great desire to be close to him, to receive him, to receive him with love. To foster, foster a great desire to be present at the holy sacrifice of the Mass. In some of his homilies and writings, Pope Francis talks about the danger of being near to other people, but without being close. At least that's how one person translates it. In Spanish, it's estar cerca sin estar cercano. So you're near someone, you're in their presence, but you're not actually close to them. There isn't a closeness. There's no intimacy. We have a treasure that is so very close to us. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. Jesus, how can I prepare to receive you better? Tell me. Tell me. It might be helpful for you or for me to pause this podcast and to pray about it. To be in silence and think, how would Jesus like me to prepare to receive him in the Eucharist? How can we prepare ourselves for Mass better? Jesus, would you like it if I spent several minutes after Mass giving you thanks? I bet he probably would. <laughs> and maybe we already do that. But perhaps the Holy Spirit will show us that sometimes we're a bit distracted or in a rush. Jesus, would you like me to visit you from time to time during the week, maybe every day, in the church that is closest to my house or, or to work? It's also a great sign of love and obedience to live that hour fast before receiving Jesus in the Eucharist and to ref refrain from receiving him if we have any mortal sins that we have not confessed yet. It's actually a great act of faith and love to wait and to make sure we get to confession as soon as we can. So Jesus, you gave us very clear examples of what it means to have our hearts set on our treasure. May the examples of the man who sells everything he has in order to get the treasure buried in the field or the merchant who goes and sells all that he has in order to buy that pearl of great price, that, that beautiful pearl. May the examples that you give us, Jesus, inspire us to love you in the Eucharist in that way. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you've communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me. You'll find more of 10 Minutes with Jesus at RelevantRadio.com and on the Relevant Radio app. It's 17 minutes past the hour, and this is Daybreak. Welcome back to Daybreak on Relevant Radio and the Relevant Radio app on Wednesday, July 27th, 2022. I'm Paul Sadek. We begin this day of praying with the whole church as we're led by our friends at DivineOffice.org in the Invitatory Psalm and the Office of Readings. Lord, open my lips, and, and my, my mouth, mouth will proclaim, proclaim your praise. praise. Come, let us worship before the Lord our Maker. Come, let us worship before the Lord our Maker. Come, let us sing to the Lord and shout with joy to the Rock who saves us. Let us approach him with praise and thanksgiving and sing joyful songs to the Lord. 
Come, let us worship before the Lord our Maker. The Lord is God, the mighty God, the great King over all the gods. He holds in his hands the depths of the earth and the highest mountains as well. He made the sea, it belongs to him. The dry land too, for it was formed by his hands. Come, let us worship before the Lord our Maker. Come then, let us bow down and worship, bending the knee before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are his people, the flock he shepherds. Come, let us worship before the Lord our Maker. Today listen to the voice of the Lord. Do not grow stubborn as your fathers did in the wilderness. When at Meribah and Massah they challenged me and provoked me, although they had seen all of my works. Come, let us worship before the Lord our Maker. Forty years I endured that generation. I said, they are a people whose hearts go astray, and they do not know my ways. So I swore in my anger, they shall not enter into my rest. Come, let us worship before the Lord our Maker. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us worship before the Lord our Maker. I love you, Lord. You are my strength. I love love you, Lord. You are my strength. I love you, Lord, my strength, my rock, my fortress, my Savior. My God is the rock where I take refuge, my shield, my mighty help, my stronghold. The Lord is worthy of all praise. When I call, I am saved from my foes. The waves of death rose about me. The torrents of destruction assailed me. The snares of the grave entangled me. The traps of death confronted me. In my anguish, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came to his ears. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and and will be forever. forever. Amen. I love love you, Lord. You are my strength. The Lord has saved me. He wanted me for his own. 
The Lord Lord has saved saved me. He He wanted me for his his own. Then the earth reeled and rocked. The mountains were shaken to their base. They reeled at his terrible anger. Smoke came forth from his nostrils and scorching fire from his mouth. Coals were set ablaze by its heat. He lowered the heavens and came down, a black cloud under his feet. He came enthroned on the cherubim. He flew on the wings of the wind. He made the darkness his covering, the dark waters of the clouds his tent. A brightness shone out before him with hailstones and flashes of fire. The Lord thundered in the heavens, The Most High let his voice be heard. He shot his arrows, scattered the foe, flashed his lightnings and put them to flight. The bed of the ocean was revealed. The foundations of the world were laid bare at the thunder of your threat, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your anger. From on high he reached down, And seized me. He drew me forth from the mighty waters. He snatched me from my powerful foe, from my enemies whose strength I could not match. They assailed me in the day of my misfortune, but the Lord was my support. He brought me forth into freedom. He saved me because he loved me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and and will be forever. Amen. The Lord has saved me. He wanted me for his own. Lord, kindle a light for my guidance, and scatter my darkness. Lord, kindle a light for my guidance, and scatter my darkness. He rewarded me because I was just, repaid me for my hands were clean, for I have kept the way of the Lord and have not fallen away, for his judgments are all before me. I have never neglected his commands. I have always been upright before him. I have kept myself from guilt. He repaid me because I was just, and my hands were clean in his eyes. You are loving with those who love you. You show yourself perfect with the perfect. With the sincere, you show yourself sincere, but the cunning you outdo in cunning. For you save a humble people, but humble the eyes that are proud. You, O Lord, are my lamp, my God, who lightens my darkness. With you I can break through any barrier. With my God, I can scale any wall. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as As it was was in the the beginning, beginning, is now, now, and and will will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, our strength and salvation. Put in us the flame of your love and make our love for you grow to a perfect love which reaches to our neighbor. Lord, kindle the light from our my nights and, and scatter, scatter my darkness. All wondered at the words of grace which came from the mouth of the Lord. From the second letter of the Apostle Paul to the Corinthians. I, Paul, exhort you by the meekness and kindness of Christ. I who, you say, when present in your midst, am lowly, but when absent, am bold toward you. I beg you that when I am there, I may not have to act boldly. With that assurance, I might dare to use courageously against certain ones who accuse us of weak human behavior. We do indeed live in the body, but we do not wage war with, re- with human resources. The weapons of our warfare are not merely human. They possess God's power 
for the destruction of strongholds. We demolish sophistries and every proud pretension that raises itself against the knowledge of God. We likewise bring every thought into captivity to make it obedient to Christ. We are ready to punish disobedience in anyone else once your own obedience is perfect. You view things superficially. If anyone is convinced that he belongs to Christ, let him reflect on this. He may belong to Christ, but just as much as we do. If I find I must make a few further claims about the the power the Lord has given us for your upbuilding and not for your destruction, this will not embarrass me in the least. At the same time, I do not wish to intimidate you with my letters. His letters, they say, are severe and forceful, but when he is here in person, he is unimpressive and his word makes no great impact. Well, let such people give this some thought, that what we are by word in the letters during our absence, that we may mean to be in action when we are present. We are not so bold, of course, as to classify or compare ourselves with certain people who recommend themselves since people like that are their own appraisers comparing themselves with one another they only demonstrate their ignorance when we make claims we will not go over the mark but will stay within the bounds the god of moderation has set for us leading us to you we are not overreaching ourselves as we should be doing if we had not bothered to come to you but indeed we did get as far as you with the gospel of Christ. We do not boast immoderately of the work of others. We hope that as your faith grows, our influence may also grow among you and overflow. Following the rule laid down for us, we hope to preach the gospel even beyond your borders without having to boast of work already done by another in his allotted territory. Let him who would boast, boast in the Lord. It is not the man who recommends himself who is approved, but the man whom the Lord recommends. You must endure a little of my folly. Put up with me, I beg you. I am jealous of you with the jealousy of God himself, since I have given you in marriage to one husband, presenting you as a chaste virgin to Christ. My fear is that Just as the serpent seduced Eve by his cunning, your thoughts may be corrupted and you may fall away from your sincere and complete devotion to Christ. I say this because when someone comes preaching another Jesus than the one we preached, or when when you receive a different spirit than the one you have received, or a gospel other than the gospel you accepted, you seem to endure it quite well. I consider myself inferior to the super-apostles in nothing. I may be unskilled in speech, but I know that I am not lacking in knowledge. We have made this evident to you in every conceivable way. The Word of the Lord Though we live in this world, we do not rely solely on the resources of the world to do battle. Our Our warfare warfare is not not waged with with the the weapons weapons of of this this world. world. We arm ourselves with the shield of faith, and with the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Our Our warfare warfare is not waged with the weapons weapons of this world. A reading from a Catechal Instruction by St. Cyril of Jerusalem, Bishop. The Church is called Catholic, or universal, because it has spread throughout the entire world, from one end of the earth to the other. Again, it is called Catholic because it teaches fully and unfailingly all the doctrines which ought to be brought to men's knowledge, whether concerned with visible or invisible things, with the realities of heaven or the things of earth. Another reason for the name Catholic is that the Church brings under religious obedience all classes of men, rulers, and subjects, learned and unlettered. Finally, it deserves the title Catholic, because it heals and cures unrestrictedly every type of sin that can be communicated in soul or in body, and because it possesses within itself every kind of virtue that can be named, whether exercised in actions or in words or in some kind of spiritual charism. 
It is most aptly called a church, which means an assembly of those called out, because it calls out all men and gathers them together, just as the Lord says in Leviticus, assemble all the congregation at the door of the tent of meeting. It is worth noting also that the word assemble is used for the first time in the scriptures at the moment when the Lord appoints Aaron high priest. So in Deuteronomy, God says to Moses, Assemble the people before me, and let them hear my words, so that they may learn to fear me. There is a further mention of the assembly in the passage about the tablets of the law. And on them were written all the words which the Lord had spoken to you on the mountain out of the midst of the fire, on the day of the assembly. It is as though he said even more clearly, On the day when you are called out by God and gathered together. So too the psalmist says, I will give thanks to you in the great assembly, O Lord. In the mighty throng I will praise you. Long ago the psalmist sang, Bless God in the assembly. Bless the Lord, you who are Israel's sons. But now the Savior has built a second holy assembly, our Christian church from the Gentiles. It was of this that he spoke to Peter, On this rock I will build my church, and the powers of death shall not prevail against it. Now that the single church which was in Judea has been rejected, and the churches of Christ are already multiplying throughout the world, and of them it is said in the Psalms, Sing a new song to the Lord. Let his praise be sung in the assembly of the saints. Taking up the same theme, the prophet says to the Jews, I have no pleasure in you, says the Lord of hosts. And immediately he adds, For from the rising of the sun to its setting, my name is glorified among the nations. Of this holy Catholic church, Paul writes to Timothy, That you may know how one ought to behave in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and bulwark of the truth. You are a chosen race, a holy nation, a people God has claimed as his own. Proclaim Proclaim the the marvelous marvelous works of him who has called us out of darkness into his own wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Proclaim the marvelous works of him who has called called us out of darkness darkness into his own wonderful light. God, our Father and Protector, without you nothing is holy, nothing has value. Guide us to everlasting life by helping us to use wisely the blessings you have given to the world. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 21 minutes before the hour, we'll take a look at today's gospel in just a few minutes. Also in conversation with God and morning prayer on Daybreak on Relevant Radio and the Relevant Radio app. This is Daybreak on Relevant Radio and the Relevant Radio app for Wednesday of the 17th week in Ordinary Time. I'm Paul Sadek. In today's Gospel from Truth and Life, the dramatized audio Bible, Jesus gives us a few more ideas about what the kingdom of heaven is like. It's from the 13th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then, in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls who, on finding one pearl of great value, went and sold all that he had and bought it. This selection from Truth and Life, the dramatized audio Bible courtesy of Falcon Picture Group, daily and Sunday Mass readings are on the relevant radio app. Now, God has a plan for each one of us, a mission that he wants us to carry out, uh, to the best of our ability, that is. That's called a vocation. So listen for God's call, and you'll find out what yours is. Today's reading from In Conversation with God by Father Francisco Fernandez Carvajal is from Volume 4, Ordinary Time. (music) 
As soon as someone has discovered his divine vocation, the disparate pieces of his past life seem to come together. What had previously been a riddle or a mystery is now clearly understood. Why we got to know a certain person, the special helps we experienced at different moments. The vocation also casts its light upon our future life, which we now see to be full of meaning. Neither of the protagonists in the parables showed hesitation or regret at the thought of selling all that they possessed. Their new wealth was so tremendous that nothing could put it in the shade. The same reaction holds true for those who give all of their love to Christ. They give all and they get all. The Lord makes a point in order to emphasize the joy that accompanies the sale of the goods. We might wonder what these men were selling. A house? Furniture? Ornaments? Things that represented years of work. But they sold everything without haggling, without a lot of hemming and hawing, with joy. They sold everything because they knew very well the worth of the treasure they would be getting in exchange. Beside this wealth, all things pale in importance. God plays a part in the life of every person and does so in a concrete way, at a certain age, in a special situation. He challenges us according to the nature of these circumstances, foreseen by Him and from all eternity. Jesus passes by and beckons. To some He calls at the first hour when they are young. He asks them for their ambitions, their hopes and dreams, all of which seem so full of promise. Others are called when they have reached an age of majority. Still others are called in their final years. The Lord finds the majority of these men and women immersed in the middle of the world. He prefers them to remain in the world that they may sanctify the world through the exercise of their professional work. The Lord finds others who are married. He asks them to sanctify the family with all its joys and sorrows. Regardless of what our age happens to be when we receive our vocation, we will find that the Lord will give it to us along with a wonderful interior youthfulness. Ecce nova facia omnia, says the Lord. I can renew all things. I can teach you to throw off routine in your life, to raise your vision to a higher plane. What then is the best age at which to give oneself to the Lord? The age when God calls. The most important thing is to be generous with Him without questioning God's timetable. It is never too late to follow Him, and it is never too soon. In Conversation with God by Francis Fernandez is published by Scepter Publishers. You'll find it at your local Catholic bookstore. Fourteen minutes before the hour, we pray now with the whole church. We're led by our friends at DivineOffice.org in morning prayer. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia.
O Lord, in your light we see light itself. O Lord, Lord, in in your light we we see light itself. Sin speaks to the sinner in the depths of his heart. There is no fear of God before his eyes. He so flatters himself in his mind that he knows not his guilt. In his mouth are mischief and deceit. All wisdom is gone. He plots the defeat of goodness as he lies on his bed. He has set his foot on evil ways. He clings to what is evil. Your love, O Lord, reaches to heaven, your truth to the skies. Your justice like God's mountain, your judgments like the deep. To both man and beast you give protection. O Lord, how precious is your love. My God, the sons of men find refuge in the shelter of your wings. They feast on the riches of your house. They drink from the stream of your delight. In you is the source of life, and in your light we see light. Keep on loving those who know you, doing justice for upright hearts. Let the foot of the proud not crush me, nor the hand of the wicked cast me out. See how the evildoers fall? Flung down, they shall never arise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as as it was was in the beginning, beginning, is now, and and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, you are the source of unfailing light. Give us true knowledge of your mercy, so that we may renounce our pride and be filled with the riches of your house. O Lord, in your light we see light itself. O God, you are great and glorious. We marvel at your power. O God, you are great and glorious. We marvel at your power. Strike up the instruments, a song to my God with timbrels. Chant to the Lord with cymbals. Sing him a new song, exalt and acclaim his name. A new hymn I will sing to my God. O Lord, great are you and glorious, wonderful in power and unsurpassable. Let your every creature serve you, for you spoke and they were made. You sent forth your spirit and they were created. No one can resist your word. The mountains to their bases and the seas are shaken. The rocks, like wax, melt before your glance. But to those who fear you, you are very merciful. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as as it it was was in the beginning, beginning, is now. now. And, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. O oh God, God, you are, you are great, great and glorious. glorious. We, we marvel at your power. Exalt in God's presence with hymns of praise. Exalt, Exalt in God's, God's presence with, with hymns of praise. praise. All peoples, clap your hands. Cry to God with shouts of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, We must fear, great king over all the earth. He subdues peoples under us and nations under our feet. Our inheritance, our glory, is from him given to Jacob out of love. God goes up with shouts of joy. The Lord goes up with trumpet blast. Sing praise for God. Sing praise. Sing praise to our king. Sing praise. God is king of all the earth. Sing praise with all your skill. God is king over the nations. God reigns on his holy throne. The princes of peoples are assembled with the people of Abraham's God. The rulers of the earth belong to God, to God all who reigns over all. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, 
and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. God, King of all peoples and all ages, it is your victory we celebrate as we sing with all the skill at our command. Help us always to overcome evil by good, and we may rejoice in your triumph forever. Exalt in God's presence with hymns of praise. A reading from the Book of Tobit Do to no one what you yourself dislike. Give to the hungry some of your bread, and to the naked some of your clothing. Seek counsel from every wise man. At all times, bless the Lord God and ask Him to make all your paths straight and to grant success to all your endeavors and plans. The Word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Incline my heart according to, to your will, O God. Incline my heart according according to your your will, will, O God. God. Speed my steps along your path according according to your your will, O God. God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Incline my heart according to your will, O O God. Show us your mercy, Lord. Remember your holy covenant. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. Remember your holy covenant. Let us give thanks to Christ and offer him continual praise, for he sanctifies us and calls us his brothers. Lord, help Help your your brothers to grow in holiness. With single-minded devotion, we dedicate the beginnings of this day to the honor of your resurrection. May we make the whole day pleasing to you by our works of holiness. Lord, help Help your your brothers to grow in holiness. As a sign of your love, you renew each day for the sake of our well-being and happiness. Renew us daily for the sake of your glory. Lord, help Help your your brothers to grow in holiness. Teach us today to recognize your presence in all men. Especially in the poor and in those who mourn. Lord, help Help your your brothers to grow in holiness. Grant that we may live today in peace with all men. Never rendering evil for evil. Lord, help Help your your brothers brothers to to grow in holiness. With the longing for the coming of God's kingdom, let us offer our prayer to the Father. Our Our Father, Father, who who art art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come. come. Thy will be done, on On earth earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and and forgive us our trespasses, as as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
God our Savior, hear our morning prayer. Help us to follow the light and live the truth. In you we have been born again as sons and daughters of light. May we be your witness before all the world. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. It's another brand new day, and morning air is coming up with John and Glenn in just a few minutes. I'm Paul Sadek. I will see you tomorrow morning at 4 a.m. Central or on the Relevant Radio app. You go out now and make this a great day and live in the light of the Lord. Audio from the Liturgy of the Hours, courtesy of DivineOffice.org. Readings from In Conversation with God, courtesy of Scepter Publishers. Selections from Truth and Life, the dramatized audio Bible, courtesy of Falcon Picture Group. Ten Minutes with Jesus is used with permission. Daybreak is available on RelevantRadio.com and on the Relevant Radio app. Daybreak is a production of Relevant Radio. Relevant Radio.